Is y'all tell me if the levels are Before okay. we get into the truly horrific details in here, remember this is a young woman who is described as brain damaged and blind and a quadriplegic. Phoenix 911. Oh, the baby's turning blue! Baby's turning blue! Her parents were promised female only staff and caretakers would attend to their daughter. But she is aware of music, of familiar voices. She feels pain. And while we are respecting her privacy and not using her name, she is much more than just the patient in all this. She is truly a survivor. We have worked virtually not. Um, so you can tell what they're talking about here, right, with this person who has been in a vegetative state for many years, who was seemingly under home care and under the care of their health care providers who they say were women and uh, ended up unknowingly pregnant. So obviously something has happened here that is not OK. And I think that first off, this is an interesting thing to talk about. It's obviously horrific, but it's an interesting topic to talk about because it is something that I think a lot of people don't think about or know that people who are in a vegetative state or who are on life support for whatever reason will continue to have their normal um, menstrual cycles and menstrual function. And it's something that the family or healthcare providers have to help people care for help to help with making sure that the hygiene is appropriate that it doesn't you know not get taken care of for many reasons and so there are things that sometimes can be done to help with that but it is just i i think horrific to think about the process of someone like this getting pregnant and what that means but medically it's not uncommon that it would be possible on stop every day, every night, seven days a week, trying to solve and resolve this case. The staff were aware that she was pregnant until she was uh, pretty much giving birth. How were they alerted to the fact that she was going into labor? From, from what I've been told, she was moaning, um, and they didn't know what was wrong with her. Okay, I'll take a bit of issue with that. They say forcing the medical staff to undergo DNA tests was enough to know that she had been abused. Like, um, she's obviously been abused. You don't need DNA tests to know that. Like, she's pregnant and she is not able to communicate. She can't consent to having sex. So I don't like the wording on that. Um, but yeah, so they forced the staff, I guess, at the care facility that she was living in to undergo DNA tests so that they could identify who the abuser was. And um, yeah, the family was rightfully real pissed that this happened. I can understand why that is horrific and not uncommon. And I think this is something that's not very often discussed that people who are living in care facilities, including elderly people, are often the victim of some kind of abuse. And it's, you know, I mean, you're less like... You're more likely than not safe in these facilities, but you're more likely to be taken advantage of when you're in a vulnerable state like that where you can't fight back or tell anybody what's happening. And that's not something that gets discussed a whole lot. And it's really awful and something I think that we should need to bring more attention to. Someone says, how could they not tell that she was giving birth that they tend to her daily. Yeah, I had the same question. I think it's real unusual that nobody noticed because she should have been having menstrual cycles. And why were they not keeping track of that? Um, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't they notice that she is not menstruating? Yeah, they don't have to be in the room constantly, though, to know that her period went away. High turnover with caretakers is reasonable, but uh, not an excuse, in my opinion, if someone is of reproductive capability, meaning they menstruate, and that is that it should be treated like a vital sign. And 
it's something that should be documented even with high turnover. Did they take DNA of the baby as well? I would imagine that they are testing the DNA of the baby to identify the culprit. So it's a nurse. 36-year-old Nathan Sutherland assaulted the victim while he was caring for her. Nathan Sutherland is really none of the things you would expect. He's a Haitian immigrant, he's been an LPN for years, and he's a Christian rapper. It'd be very, very tough to believe that medical personnel were seeing her, treating her, and couldn't realize that she was eight or nine months pregnant. It's Board Calling's situation horrifying, adding they're cooperating fully with police. Hussein's his most recent state inspection, ending in six citations. Sutherland is a licensed practical nurse who was responsible for providing care to the victim during this time of sexual assault. You can see him making his first court appearance there. That happened just today. The pain, the damages, my refusal to forgive my biological mom has, has done to others through me. I didn't realize I was capable of such evil, disturbing act. DNA evidence proved he is the father of her baby. We owed this arrest to the victim. We owed this arrest to the newest member of our community, that innocent baby. He um, was always clean shaved. His hair was always nicely done. It's completely different than what I see on the picture today. I was in and out and um, he would stay in the room um, dealing with the patients. By himself. By, yeah, by himself. Uh, when you're in a vegetative state, uh, you're not breaking. So the autonomic nervous system is controlling the body. Uh, the uterus is contracting just as it would in a woman who is not in a vegetative state. Uh, so all the functions of labor are in place. Yeah, so the process of labor and delivery here is, uh, you know, an interesting one. And it, certainly you can deliver a baby without participating in that process. It's oftentimes takes quite a while and doesn't happen um, in a way that 
is as safe as possible for the baby, but in this situation, it seems as though the baby did fine. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it is wild that you can be in a coma and still deliver a healthy baby. It is, this whole thing is, you know, I didn't watch this when I got tagged and I just saved that because I was, um, horrified and I didn't know how I felt about watching it. And then I thought, you know, I, I actually think this is a video that, although it is awful to talk about, could be beneficial for bringing attention to things that need attention and that people don't know that happen and also can still give us, you know, something to learn as far as, you know, how the body continues to function from a standpoint of, you know, normal um, physiologic function while you are in a in a coma. It's uh it's what it's wild. And I did anybody catch how old this person was? I don't know that I um caught how old they were. But in a case like this, uh, where the patient was getting appropriate medical care, uh, the correct course of action would be to do what we call assisted second stage of labor. Uh, we let the I, um, I'm, hang on, I'm worried about this person. I think that the yeah, information being given at the moment is accurate. I think that this person on screen is, hang on, let me look at something. Yep, okay, it is the person that I thought, and not someone I would recommend, um, you know, I, not someone I would recommend from a medical standpoint. They have a terribly negative presence on the internet and uh, are, mm, the information being given right now is accurate, but I'm going to skip past uh, the rest of it because I'm not a fan. So yes, the ideal situation would be if we know that the person is pregnant, we would uh, note when they go into labor and we would do an assisted second stage or a passive second stage in which during the process of labor, we can identify how deep in the pelvis the head is. And once at a safe position, we would be able to do a forceps delivery and get the fetus out safely. And that would maximize the chances of everything going smooth and being safe for everybody involved. That is obviously not possible when nobody realizes that they're pregnant, which if the chat is correct that we're 29, then it's absolutely unexcusable that nobody noticed that this person wasn't having cycles anymore. I could see a scenario where someone is a bit older and they think, oh, maybe they've just gone into early menopause because they're so unhealthy or they've been in a vegetative state for so long. Sure. But 29, come on, that's absolutely ridiculous. That should not be something that went unnoticed. The baby boy's 29-year-old mother has been in a vegetative state since the age of three and gave birth on December. Wait, since the age of three? Since the age of three, they said it was 14 years. Then that would be 17. Was this person also a minor? What is happening? See, so the question is, is that type of a delivery recommended over a C-section in a case like this? Yes, definitely. I mean, there would be situations where you might need to do a C-section instead, but if we can avoid it, this is definitely safer and you often can avoid it. They just said 29. Did they... Wait, it, no, it said just now it said she was three. The, they didn't know the patient was the pregnant. The baby boy's 29-year-old mother has been in a vegetative state since the age of three. Okay, yeah, you're right. It says 29 and age of three. At the beginning, it said 14 years. I am... Um, the math's not mathing. <laughs> ...and gave birth on December 29th. It's been nearly three years. One of our patients just had a baby and we just had no idea she was pregnant. Since an incapacity. Can you imagine if you were the healthcare provider there? As much as I feel like uh, this is unacceptable that nobody noticed this, can you imagine if you 
were working that day as you know, an LVN or a caretaker at a facility and somebody just had a baby. That's absolutely, wow. That's wild. A woman gave birth at Hacienda Healthcare. He ended up pleading guilty. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Admitted to the charge of sexual assault and abuse of a vulnerable adult. which would mean that they have much less of a sentence. Judgment and sentence of the court defendant be in prison in Arizona Department of Corrections for the aggravated term of 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, I would imagine that doesn't make the family very happy. That is absolutely horrendous. And can we please talk about what happens with parental rights after that? Does this person have access to the child who will be 10 when they and probably much less than that when they get out of prison what the heck happens there aren't there some attorneys on here can we talk about this with an attorney like this is wild her family in a statement tuesday through their attorney said that she is not in a coma she has significant intellectual disability as a result of seizures very early in her childhood, the attorney's statement said she does not speak but has some ability to move her limbs, head, and neck. Their daughter responds to sound and is able to make facial gestures. The important thing is that she is beloved daughter, albeit with significant intellectual disabilities. Yeah, you know, I think that not only is 10 years too weak of a sentence for this piece of shit, like what happens then with custody and access to the child? And also, what happens with, I just, I think that aggravated assault of a person who has serious intellectual disability or especially is under your care because they are incapacitated to any extent, that should be, that should be treated as though you have aggravated assault of a, of a minor. This should be treated that this should be treated the same as a minor. I don't understand. Like, if somebody is under the custody of the state or still under, like, if you have a power of attorney over somebody because of their intellectual or physical disability that makes it impossible for them to be able to consent to something like surgery. Like, if, if somebody would be in charge of your life to the extent that they have to sign a surgical consent for you, they should be treated by the system if they are in this situation where they are abused like that as a in the same way as a minor would be, right? This person should have to register as a sex offender. That This is insane. This is insane. How can you get 10 years for that and probably get out in five to seven on good behavior? This is absolutely, I am, I'm floored. I'm appalled. This is horrible. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve to be hurt. No matter what was going on, in my personal life and the demons I was I was fighting. Yes, actually, I agree somewhere in our system is very messed up. They've chosen to keep their daughter's identity anonymous, not give interviews, and they just hope to raise this child. I mean, that's great. I love the love he deserves and away from his father who's Okay, but but will they be able to keep the kid away from its father? Like legally, can you do that? And also can we please talk about how they said, uh, you know, no matter what was going on in my personal life? Like, yeah, yeah, nobody cares about that. I don't, like, no, I don't care what was going on in your personal life. Why would you even include that in a statement? Should, do you want to go get your ukulele while you're at it? What the hell is this? I, that, oh my God. Well, we can't end on this. Now I'm just getting started. Now I just want to, like, rage watch everything. What the heck? This is horrible. It says a repeat event. Yeah, I think that the CNN article that was referenced earlier is potentially a bit confusing. So according to CNN, her giving birth was likely a repeat Paris event. When they say this, parody is, so parody, Paris, P-A-R-O-S, is actually not uh, referring to pregnancies. We refer to things as gravid, and gravid is how many pregnancies you've had, and Paris, parody, or Paris, means deliveries, and this only includes 
past 20 weeks. So if you have a miscarriage, we include that in a different section of these. But if somebody's saying this is a multi paris event, it wouldn't mean you've had a pregnancy and a miscarriage. So I am um, not really sure about the timelines on all of this because obviously if she'd been in a coma 14 years and she was in a coma since she was three, that's not accurate because they said she's 29. If she's 29, she's been in a coma for 14 years, then that would mean at some point at age 15 or younger, the person had had a baby. I don't know what the accuracy of any of this reporting is, but Paris would, you know, just for learning purposes, not be something that could be considered multi-Paris if it was just having been pregnant and had a miscarriage. Some states take away your parental rights if you're sentenced to jail for long enough. Now, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. That seems a bit odd as well, given that we frequently sentence people to jail for things that one, they might not really have done or should be in jail that long for. And the disparities in how we sentence people make me concerned about that as a rule. But this person, this, you know, absolutely scum of the earth, garbage piece of crap should not have access to their child.